Welcome back. Breaking overnight, a big moment. The newly freed American hostages are back in the United States after months of imprisonment in North Korea, arriving at Walker Reed Medical Center after a warm welcome home from President Trump and the First Lady. Here now to react to this historic event is Asia analyst and the author of Nuclear Showdown, Gordon Chang. Gordon, thank you for joining us this morning. Just your thoughts as you were watching this live at 3 a.m. as it played out. You know, it's a great day when Americans are freed from tyranny, and that's exactly what happened today. And they were able to walk on the plane, unlike Otto Wambier, who came back in a vegetative state. Mm -hmm. So this is just a joyous moment for everybody. It's also a good sign for the nuclear negotiations that are going to occur soon. But let's just savor the moment, because this really was a terrific day. Absolutely. Certainly was. And, and, and you, you, you mentioned the difference between Otto and these three. And you think that that shows maybe a change in their agenda, that, oh. that the fact that these three are healthy and happy and coming home? Yeah, I, I think the North Koreans wanted to create a good atmosphere, so they, they kept the three hostages in good condition. And so, you know, with North Korea, there are very few coincidences. So I think that really what they were trying to say was, look, we want to have good relations with the U.S. You know, we're entering into these negotiations. Let's be friends. Hmm. Now, we talked about in the commercial break that a lot has changed over the course of the last year. What do you see happening with this upcoming summit? Well, you know, we're going to insist on North Koreans giving up their nuclear weapons and their ballistic missiles. You think they will? I think that uh, they're going to try not to, but it's really a question of whether President Trump is willing to use all the elements of American power to force the North Koreans to do something they don't want to do, something they thought they would never do. So it's, it's really a Trump question. It's not a Kim question, because we've got a lot of stuff that we can do, not only to the North Koreans, but to their major power backers, the Russians and the Chinese. I mean, when you, when you look at the world and you look at it from a Western perspective, you see how well we're able to live and most of Europe is able to live and then you see how they live in North Korea, you would think that the idea of just opening up this country and playing by some kind of international rules would benefit everybody there, including uh, Kim Jong-un. What is it that they find so threatening? It, it would benefit the North Korean people, but for Kim, you know, yeah. who has this incredibly privileged position, he has that because he's able to keep people poor. When people are poor, they don't have the means to resist. Yeah. And that's why this regime in, in North Korea, although it's completely destitute and has been that way for many decades, is able to survive because people are poor. As yeah. time goes on now, we are expected to learn information from these three Americans. They are being checked out medically right now. At some point, we're going to start to hear things. What are you interested in learning from them? You know, it would be interesting if they knew a little bit, for instance, about what happened to Otto Wambier. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think that they will because these people have been kept in separate silos. So I'm not so sure that they know about what happened to other detainees. You know, but any little bit of information information is important because we know very little about what goes on inside North Korea. So bits of information are going to be incredibly important and could be consequential in connection with other things that we may know. And you'd want an answer about David Snedden, too, who disappeared in China. That, oh. that was another one we talked about last time you were here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because he disappeared under circumstances which are really suspicious. There's a r indications that he is in North Korea that makes sense uh, from a number of different perspectives. The yep. Chinese police report of his death is fabulous fabricated from all that we know. So I'd like to know about what, where is David Snedden? I think the North Koreans, they should say either we have him or we don't. We don't. Right. I want to hear about that. Well, still a lot more questions than answers, but this is certainly a step in the right direction this morning and something to be celebrated. Yeah. Thank you very Definitely. much for your time. Thanks. Breaking overnight, President Trump greeting the newly freed American hostages back to the U.S. after months of imprisonment in North Korea. It has been a remarkable morning here now to react to this historic event is Asia analyst and the author of Nuclear Showdown, Gordon Chang. There's nobody better to have on set this morning. We thank you so much. How significant is what we just saw? It is extremely significant, and largely because this is going to be just weeks before our president sits down with Kim Jong-un, the first time a sitting North Korean leader and sitting American president have gotten together. And, of course, the issues are, con are consequential. You not only have the nukes, you've got ballistic missiles, you've got the Japanese abductees. Maybe there's a fourth American there. You know, there's all sorts of things that we got to talk about. Let's focus on the nuke discussion. What does this portend for the nuclear discussion that we expect to happen in Singapore in June? 
It's a good sign because these three were in good health. They were able to walk on the plane by themselves. This is in contrast to Otto Wambier, who was released in June of last year. He was in extremely poor condition, a vegetative state, died shortly after returning right. to the U.S. Then the North Koreans didn't like us. Now the North Koreans want to create some goodwill, so they kept these guys in good condition. But do you have a sense as to what Kim Jong-un is willing to give up and what we are willing to accept? I'm asking you to sort of predict sure. what the outcome is going to be of June's meetings. Well, you know, for us, um, the only thing that we're willing to uh, accept is a complete disarmament of North Korea. And that's absolutely critical. Our allies depend on it. We depend on it. The whole neo world's nuclear nonproliferation regime depends on disarming North Korea. Now, Kim, of course, doesn't want to do right. that. But then again, this is not a question of what Kim wants. This is a question of what President Trump will do, because we've got the power, short of the use of force, to disarm the North Koreans. The question is whether our president will be willing to do those things in order to protect not only the American people, but the rest of the world. We heard President Trump there while the hostages were being released, while the detainees were being released, and he said he thinks Kim Jong-un really wants to enter the real world. You know this area so well. Do you agree with that statement? I think he might want to enter the real world with his nukes. Okay. Um, and, and so, you know, it's going to be up to us to make sure that that doesn't happen. And, and as I mentioned, you know, we can do that. I mean, we can tighten the sanctions on North Korea. We can actually go after North Korea's major power backers, Russia and China, who have been supporting North Korea to varying degrees. They're better now than they were two years ago. But, you know, when you go back two months, China's markedly deteriorated in its sanctions enforcement. These are things that we have to do. Now, that doesn't really matter, Tom if North Korea gives up its nukes, but if it doesn't, then we've got to start pushing the Chinese around. You mentioned a fourth detain detainee that sort of got lost in all the exciting news about these three yeah. detainees and, of course, the Otto Warmbier sad situation. Tell us a little bit more about that. That's David Snedden, who disappeared from China in 2004 in mysterious circumstances. The Chinese police reports are obvious fabrications. It looks like North Korean agents took him in order that he could teach English. Some people say that he taught English to Kim Jong-un. There's at least one report of David Snedden being cited in North Korea. You know, at this point, we really don't know. But what we do need to do is get a, a confirmation from the North Koreans that they don't hold them or an admission that they do. You know, this is just like the Japanese who were taken by North Korea for language instruction. Just quickly, does this gum up the works on the June summit? I don't think that it does, but it's something that we can't forget because this is another American who very well may be in that tyrannical state. Gordon Chang, amazing perspective, obviously, on an historic morning. Thank you so very much for being here. Thanks, Todd. A Fox News alert. History made overnight as President Trump welcomes home three newly freed American hostages from North Korea. Here now to react is Fox News foreign policy analyst Kyron Skinner. Kyron, thank you so much for being here on such an historic morning. Right now, those three detainees are at Walter Reed Medical Center getting medical treatment. In all likelihood, at some point soon, if it hasn't happened already, they will be debriefed. What do we expect to learn? Um, they're important um, assets. Um, first, let me say this is, as you'll hear throughout the day, an histor a, an historic moment um, for the United States and for the world, for the families of, the, of those that were held, those three Americans, um, and for them as well. So with that said, they're incredible human um, um, intelligence assets for the United States um, as the um, White House prepares for the summit with Kim Jong-un. And what I mean by that is that we don't have um, the quantity and quality of on-the-ground intelligence in North Korea that we have in other um, nations due to the fact that North Korea is a deeply isolated country over many decades. And because it's been walled off from the rest of the world, there's a lot that we don't know. What these three um, um, former hostages can tell us is their impression of the state of the political culture in North Korea, what North Koreans are saying, the citizens, what they think about their government, um, how the government interacts in very subtle ways that we can't perceive. Right. That will be incredibly valuable information as the um, Trump administration crafts its strategies going into the disarmament talks. You mentioned that this could be President Trump's Reagan moment. What do you mean by that? 
You know, people forget that the cold, the um, final decade of the Cold War was an incredibly tense period um, where there were concerns that nuclear war might happen. Um, the U.S. placed intermediate nuclear forces in Europe at the end of 1983. But earlier in that year, the United States worked closely with the Soviet Union, Reagan and, and Yuri Andropov, the Soviet general secretary, to get the release of two Soviet Pentecostal families who lived in the basement of the U.S. Embassy in Moscow for almost five years. And that was quietly done. It wasn't revealed until 1990, after the Reagan administration. And it, it prefigured the disarmament talks that came later. Right. Without the human rights intervention, I don't think we would have had an end to the Cold War. Speaking of other presidents, President Obama negotiated the release of Bo Bergdahl, and we gave up a lot to get Bo Bergdahl back. Obviously, we don't know the particulars of this release and this negotiation, but it doesn't seem like President Trump gave up a lot. It seems like this was a barrier to entry for the talk coming up in June. How do you respond to that? I think you have it right. I don't have any inside information about um, the um, discussions behind the scenes to secure the release, but it does appear that this is something of a precondition for the, um, the larger talks that will take place. But it really speaks to, I think, the essence of diplomacy. Diplomacy happens through a series and sequence of moves. And often the political settlement is so central to getting a technology um, negotiation forward. The disarmament talks are about dismantling an, um, the technology problem of nuclear weapons and ICBMs in, in North Korea. But it's not the real problem with North Korea. It's the fact that it's an isolated dictatorship that oppresses people. Mm -hmm. And that's what Trump is starting with. He's paving the way um, to have talks on a different matter. The art of the deal. Kyron Skinner, thanks so much.